Here we go, guys. Back on the horse. That was so, ugh. Hello, it is feeding time. My horse will probably interrupt this, but I figured that I would take you along on my evening chores because I haven't done any vlogs and I just wanted to give you a little bit more insight into what happens every single day on the road for me. As a solo, full-time, female RVer with two horses. That was a mouthful, but here we go. First thing, I forgot my knife at my truck or at my trailer, so I can't get into my alfalfa. So I'm going to take Juice and I'm going to put a halter on him and ride him to my trailer because I don't want to walk. So let's do that. He is very hungry and very noisy. All right, buddy. First, I got to move the giant barrel of poop that I didn't want to dump this morning and now I have to dump it because it's very full. Say hi. Oh, you look so scared. Whoa. Oh boy. Hi, buddy. Okay, so I'm gonna show you if I can me putting this on juice with one hand. Because he's a good boy. So oh I'm like <laughs> this is not working. <laughs> hi buddy. Thanks for putting up with me. Let's try again. Here we go. Do we have success? We don't have success. <laughs> come on. Hold on. He is ready to come out of the stall. Come on. I am going to use my alfalfa as, oh, he's gonna get the snack, <laughs> as a mounting block. Oh, buddy. Let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna sit you down for a second. Oh my god, Juice is farting. I'm trying to film a nice video and Juice is over here farting in it. Um, so, I am going to get my knife. I have quite in, quite the transportation for that task. Riding the pony. But hey, you gotta use what you can to not have to walk, right? So I'm just realizing as I get to my trailer that I don't have a way to get back on and there's a whole bunch of people that are going to watch me try and do this. So maybe I didn't think this through. I gotta get my knife, so I'm just going to tie juice over here somewhere. Hi, everybody. I don't know where I'm gonna put him. That is the bathhouse over there. I didn't know that until people kept coming and leaving from there. And I was like, what is this place? It's the bathhouse. And there's a washer and dryer in there. I hauled my laundry 20 miles to a laundromat at 6 o'clock in the morning and there's a laundromat literally 10 steps, excuse me sir, 10 steps from my trailer. Trailer, bathhouse, and laundry. Alright, time to grab this. Let's see if I can keep my horse from escaping. No, you can't go in there. That's for me. Whoa. Pause. Where's my knife? It's a mess in here. Not really. Juice, juice. He's not cooperating. Where's my knife? Did I put it away? That would be a novel thing. Oh, of course I didn't. Um, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> Hold on. I don't know where to tie my horse. I'm just gonna leave him here. Hopefully he doesn't walk away. Please stay. I have located my knife and I am prepared to go give the horses some food. All right, I don't have a good plan for this. Step one, get out of the trailer. Step two, close the door. Back up. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I bumped his nose on it. I feel bad. Step three, figure out how to get on the horse. Put one foot over here. Put one foot up here. Oh, guys, this is gonna be a jump. I'm gonna have to jump. I don't like this plan. <laughs> this is a bad plan. 
Okay, new plan is going to be the original plan, which was to use the step that is right here. Sorry that this is such a mess. I am recording on my phone and I don't have my tripod on it. So it's super close to me. Come here. Thank you. All right, so got the horse. I'm gonna walk him up here. He can't really go anywhere. Okay, a little bit further juice. Step up. Come here. He's not cooperating. All right. Oh, here we go, guys. Back on the horse. That was so. What did you do? Come here. Funny story. I just fell off the horse. <laughs> oh my gosh. What an adventure this has been. All I wanted was my knife. That's all I wanted. And here we are. But I made it back to the barn. So now it's time for food. For the horses, that is. Right now, I am grabbing their grain. They get two mm -hmm. scoops. I'm going to flip this around, actually. They get two they get a scoop of this tribute, I think tribute colonies is what I paid for all my horse people. I usually give them just under two quarts. I don't know why I do just under two quarts and not exactly two quarts, but I've always done that. At least for them. It seems to work and it saves me a little bit of feet. It actually is the difference between me getting a full month out of my six bags of feed and me only getting or me missing a few days of feed. So that's kind of why I feed just under two quarts. And they hold their weight super good and my horses are pretty fat. Everybody always comments on it, so not too worried about it. But grab your feet and get just under two quarts. And open up right up. Oh well. Here we go. And unlock. Some food. Here we are. Oh, this has been grained. So they also get a flake of alfalfa. This is a three string bale, which means that I have to kind of guesstimate. All right. Okay, so this is actually going to be really easy to break. Kind of one flake. You see there? He's going to try and escape. So after I have fed them, I will pick their stalls. Sometimes I do this before I feed them. I actually do that most of the time, just because they like to spread their hay out, and then it makes it my life a lot harder whenever I'm picking stalls. So, this is kind of a hard job to do with only one hand, and you probably don't want to see the poop. So I'm going to just show you the finished product. I have clean juices stall, and I'm going to clean this. It generally takes me about four or five minutes to clean a stall. Not that long, because both of my horses are very neat and they only poop and pee in one spot. Yay, Libby pooped. She's also been kind of constipated, but it, she hasn't been colicky, so it's been weird. I don't think, I don't know why, honestly. She's drinking lots of water and she's eating. She just hasn't been pooping as much or she's been burying her poop and I haven't been able to find it. That could also be happening. Okay, Libby's stall is now cleaned. I have decided that she was burying her poop because I found a lot more than I expected to find. I clean their stalls two times a day, and so, if not more, so I usually don't have too much to clean up whenever I do clean them. Now, I'm carrying this out. I'm going to dump it into the spreader. Oh, oh gosh, this is hard to do with one hand. Success. You see, sometimes I wait to dump this until it's really, really heavy, and then I have to drag it down 
the hallway to the spreader and it's just not fun. One last thing. So, I have now fed grain and hay. I have wrapped Libby's hoof and I have cleaned their stalls. Last thing I do before I leave is I give them fresh water. I dump what there's buckets. Each horse has two buckets um, because it's hot down here in Florida and they drink a lot of water. So I'll dump their buckets and refill them with clean water and then I'm good to go. I'm tired guys. My arm is tired from holding this camera. I leave their doors open and just hope that they don't escape while I'm doing this. Don't leave my juice. He's focused on his head. I just unsnapped the bucket with one hand. I'm getting better at this. It's kind of heavy, but you can see how clean it is because I dump it two times a day. I mean, I always go by the rule if I wouldn't want to drink the water. Then, okay, that one here has grain in. Then I dump it. I don't know how I'm gonna do this one. This one. I did it. Hang this back up. Let's see if I can do this. Oops, success. Snap these. I always snap them away from the horse's nose and stuff because I don't want them to get a nose caught on it. Since I travel a lot, I don't like to hang up bucket hangers everywhere I go because usually that means you have to drill into the wall. Not everybody wants to let you do that if they don't already have bucket hangers and this place doesn't. So we just be very careful with the snaps. I also electrical tape my buckets on the side so that nobody catches noses or, or tails or anything on the hooks because that can be very expensive. First things first. My favorite part of this barn is that every single stall has its own water. It saves me so much time. Chores always seem to take, for no reason at all, longer than expected. I have no idea why, because I do this two times a day. You would think that I am efficient at it, and I like to think that I am, but it still takes longer than expected. Close this up and give her water. And then I'll do one last final check to make sure doors are shut, stalls are clean, horses have water, horses have food, and the feed room is shut because there's bears around here. And I don't want any critters getting into my feed and eating it. So we're gonna try and prevent that. That concludes the barn chores. I hope you enjoyed this journey because it was a journey today. I mean, we had all sorts of stuff from falling off horses to constipated horses and wrapped in hooves and that's just all in a day. I never really know what to expect whenever I show up at the barn. The horses always keep me on my toes. Anybody who owns a horse knows how horses are. They always seem to find a way to hurt themselves and my two are no exception to that. If you want more content like this, like and subscribe down below because I got a lot more where that came from.